Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here. Welcome to DCS World 2.8.6 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to tutorial 13, Cluster Bombs. Today I'm going to demonstrate the usage of the BLG66 AC Cluster Bomb, which is the only type that can be carried by the M2000C. Uh, you can, however, carry seven of them, which is quite an impressive amount. Uh, as you can see here, you can carry them singly on pylons 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 for quite an impressive loadout. Now this, uh, this is a 305 kilogram class weapon uh, and each of these cluster munitions carries 151 bomblets. Uh, the, the bombs themselves, when they fall away from the aircraft, deploy a parachute uh, to retard them. Uh, and as they're uh, being slowed down by the parachute, they individually dispense these 151 bomblets uh, in a spread. So quite an effective weapon. Uh, and the AC version of this weapon is the anti-armor variant, so it's capable of destroying light armor. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it today uh, at the runway at Criteria again, actually, just because I thought that's, uh, it's quite easy to see the effect of the weapon there. Uh, I've lined the runway with uh, T-55 tanks. Uh, I don't think this weapon will actually penetrate them, uh, but let's see. Let's find out anyway. Uh, and we should nonetheless get quite an interesting uh, representation of uh, the capabilities of this weapon. It's very impressive to see it in action in any case. So, um, this is another CCIP weapon, so the, the setup is almost exactly the same as what you've seen previously for weapons like the BAP um, and, and the, uh, the retarded uh, Hydrag weapons as well. So, let's get started. Uh, weapons profile for this weapon is, is BF6. So you can see there, uh, and if I push my switch down here, I can see my complete loadout. Again, we've got uh, seven BF6s on board the aircraft, and we're also carrying uh, magic air-to-air -air infrared guided missiles on the outer pylons. So with that done, we can go ahead and select BF6. As usual, we want to make sure that TAS, uh, which means it'll use the air-to-ground ranging radar, is selected. And RS is also selected, that means it'll use data from the radar altimeter. We're going to go master arm on. And then if I look at the PPA here, uh, we've got two settings that we can use on the fusing, RET and instantaneous. RET uh, will give us a long spread of the weapons, and instantaneous will give us a shorter spread of the weapons when you want the bomblets to be a little bit tighter. Um, I'm going to try and basically cover the entire runway today. So I'm going to go for RET for a long uh, spread. This uh, will spread the bomblets out a lot more, so it may make them less effective, but we will cover a larger area. Let's select all seven bombs to be dispensed, so uh, seven on the top window, and on the bottom window I'm going to set it to the maximum value, which is 28. Now this is uh, times 10 meters, so that's 280 meters between each bomb. Uh, that's the longest possible release that you can do uh, in the Mirage. We're then going to turn our attention to the HUD. I'm going to press a uh, weapon system command forward and we then get our symbology. And the symbology is exactly the same as we've seen before for weapons like the BAP uh, and the high drag bombs. So BF again confirming here that we have a high drag weapon. We have a gap in the bomb fall line which shows where the last weapon will drop. Uh, and we have a pipper which is far below the bottom of the HUD right now. And we have an indication telling us we should fly down on the flight path marker. So flight path marker with a down arrow means we are too high. An up arrow means that we are too low. Um, fairly rare that you're going to see that one but still it's worth noting. I'm going to come out of active pause now and I'm going to reduce my altitude. Let's get ourselves into parameters and weapons release as always is microbe uh, second stage or uh, trigger basically. So weapons trigger all the way down to the second stage and hold. Right we can now see the weapon pipper but it still says that we're too high. Let's accelerate a little bit as well. Uh, we're probably going to want to be around about, oh here we go, that's us, we're in parameters now. We're probably going to want to be around 600 feet for the deployment of this weapon. I'm going to go mill power, 
and I'm going to try and get good alignment on the runway here so we can get it going all the way down. Now, as before, uh, we want to see wings on that pipper. That lets us know that uh, all parameters are currently correct. And we want to maintain the flight path, path marker. Let me just pause here. We want to maintain the flight path marker within this altitude bracket on the left-hand side. So we can see that we're quite close to the maximum altitude allowable for this type of release. Uh, so I'm going to maintain flight path marker on the horizon. Bomb fall line right down the runway. And I want to maneuver until I've got that weapons release pipper at the start of the runway. And I'm going to pull and hold the trigger at the start of the runway. And you'll see that the line will line up almost with the end. Okay, holding the trigger now. And all the way. So, and you can already see some of them have actually uh, started exploding. Let's, uh, let's see if we can set up a camera here and get a good view of what is still to occur. That was actually quite effective. Uh, well, you know, it was it covered the runway. I don't think I've actually destroyed any of these tanks. I've upset them, for sure, but I don't think I've actually destroyed any of them. Uh, no, it would seem that none of them have been destroyed. So, yeah, this is really a weapon for use against softer-skinned vehicles. But in any case, that was a complete release there. Let me uh, cancel that warning. Uh, again, it wants us to switch to air-to-air -air limits on the... Uh, on the fly-by-wire, and if I press Weapon System Command Switch Aft, I get rid of the symbology, and we're back into nav mode. So there you go. That was seven belugas dropped going down the middle of the runway. Pretty impressive, I think. Uh, what I'll do quickly is uh, I'm going to reset the simulation and set up a camera so you can see the whole thing from the ground. Be right back. Okay, here we are. Here is the reverse camera view of our bombing run here, straight down the runway at Akrotiri. This is what the enemy would see. Quite impressive overall. And yes, certainly if there had been any lighter-skinned vehicles here, they would definitely be destroyed. Looks like one of these tanks at least is on fire. Uh, so, yeah. Not super effective. Not super effective. We've probably only taken out one tank, I would say. Uh, but still, yes, uh, if you're dealing with infantry, softer-skinned vehicles, and various other types of target, this would be very effective indeed, I believe. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew for a small monthly fee if you would like to further support the channel. Thank you very much to those of you who have already done so. Uh, you can uh, a big shout out to Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, JR Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kirtan, Tiger Moto, Sean I Am 81, Charts, John Bloor, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.